Hey, welcome to the Silver Fox Hustle podcast with me, your host Shasi, and this is a special episode because it's episode 20, of course, and it's also something that's close to my heart. It's uh, youth football in Singapore. Uh, I started off my coaching career after my playing career in 2004 in youth coaching, and uh, nothing beats the feeling of uh, actually seeing a youth player grow firstly as a good human being, firstly, and then as a footballer. Also a special episode because 2020 also marks the 10th year anniversary of the YOG Games in Singapore, in which the Sing Singapore football team were dubbed as the golden generation of footballers. And also special because I first met the three guests on my show in 2007, way back as 12 or 11 year olds coaching them for a tournament. We'll speak about that tournament later on. Now in the studio, two members of the football team are here that captured the bronze medal and another player who made a mark in the Lion City Cup in subsequent years. Part of the team that captivated the whole of Singapore during that period with their results and more importantly with their refreshing performances. Now that tournament plus the Lion City Cup gave rise to a few poster boys. The three poster boys are here. We have them in the studio. And uh, they were touted as the future of Singapore football, the golden generation, so to speak, which in the end wasn't to be. Now I speak to three of these players whom I coached at under 12 level back in 2007. Welcome to the Silver Fox Hustle podcast, Mr. Jeffrey Lightfoot, Mr. Elias Lee and Mr. Adam Swandi. How are you guys? Hi, Jesse. Hi. Hey, good. Thanks Very for good. having us. <laughs> Hi, good. It's, uh, it, it, it's a pleasure having you guys. And it's been like, what? Uh, I think it's been a long time since you guys, and plus myself, are uh, in the same room together. I think that was in way back in 2007. So what's up with you guys? How has things been, at least for this year, uh, during this pandemic? Adam? Um, I'm supposed to be back in football. I'm supposed to start football again, but um, with the current madness of the... <laughs> pandemic so I'm just waiting for football to restart again and you know start kicking off everything uh, uh, I also understand that you are off from a very very bad injury right uh, it's the ACL plus the MCL I believe and uh, I saw that that uh, tackle like last year uh, that was in last year and at that time it wasn't that bad but when I looked at the replay it was pretty bad you know the tackle was bad uh, you are fine now, you are back into training and I, in fact today was or is the day that you know there is full training isn't it? Yep, um, I've been waiting for today, I've been waiting <laughs> to train with the whole team, it's yeah. always been in groups of five and it's getting quite mundane. I think. And, um, You're playing playing what in fives? Uh, <laughs> we're just playing rondo and doing passing drills and everything but you can't play a match with five. Right, so. right. right. Uh, how about you Jeff, how has it been uh, during this pandemic? Uh, it's been pretty tough. I'm, I'm coaching at JSSL ah, Singapore okay. now, yep. so doing coaching, yep. as Adam mentioned, in fives. <laughs> so, have to keep things fresh, right. creative with the sessions with the young boys, especially groups of five. So, so now you know how difficult it is to coach young boys. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> remember <laughs> those days back yeah. in 2007. How about Elias? How, how you, uh, and what have you been doing during this pandemic? Uh, everything has been pretty good for me at this point of time, you know, um, although it's a um, is this COVID period, but you know, I'm still at home studying. I'm in uni now, NUS uh, Electrical Engineering. Right. Plus, um, this COVID gave rise to an opportunity to further progress my home bakery business. So, if, wow. so like <laughs> more people are more people staying at home, so more orders for bakes and stuff <laughs> like that. Yeah. So you bake? Yeah. You personally bake. Some stuff, the simpler stuff. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, stuff. Yeah, I see Jeffrey uh, laughing. Man. All right, let's let's go back and speak about football first, right? And we go back to the bakery later on. How it all started for you guys? Now, uh, Adam, I understand that you were, or you started playing or kicking a ball when you were four years old. Is that right? Yes. How did that right. start? I don't know. I think I had uh, a way older brother. So right. He was really into football, so I was always looking at him watching games and okay. you know playing football so I think I just decided to join in and I really loved it. Right. It was really something that um, was the main highlight of my childhood. Elias? Uh, same, I have an uh, elder brother so I think we, we take a lot of inspiration from, from them watching the game and also playing. Um, so 
Yeah, that's how I actually started as well. Mm. For myself, yeah, my dad is a massive Liverpool supporter. I think, ah, yeah, okay. I think, okay. I think you know. Yeah. So yeah, he int- introduced me to the sport at a very young age, and just okay. yeah, I think right, grew, right. grew and grew for me. How about yeah. school wise? Where which schools did you go to? Just uh, quickly, in in primary school especially. Uh, for myself, I was in. Rosyth School for one year, okay. primary school for primary one, and then ACS right. Junior. Right. Then right. I moved on to Victoria School in secondary school, and then I moved on to Singapore Poly. Right. Ilyas? Uh, I think primary school really um, helped me grow in terms of playing football. When I was in primary four, primary five, there was this thing in the North Cluster okay. called the Entry Cluster. Uh, I went to Huamin Primary School. Okay. Um, it's not really a n- well-known school for football, but there was these North Clusters where every Saturday all the players would go to um, Perry Pembry and they would have a session with like um, the late coach Amin Nasir. Right, right. right. Um, Fundy was there as well. Coach Fundy, uh, Coach Tohari Paijan. Yeah. So that weekly thing um, helped me grow as a player. So. Uh, Aravin was from there also, uh, ah, okay. one of uh, <laughs> one player. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there, there's a few uh, good players from there who, right. who developed over the years. Yeah. Yeah. Any any influences at, at a very young age in terms of, uh, you know, it could be a coach at primary school level or, or, you know, even a teacher, a school teacher, for example, and like you said, like your dad maybe, but any early influences that, you know, you think, oh, I, I look up to this guy and, and I want to play football like him, for example. Adam? For me, honestly, it was the TV, so the football <laughs> stars. Right, it like was who? Ronaldo, it was for me, because I was supporting Liverpool, okay. so I really like uh, Luis Garcia. Ah, okay. Because okay. of his style. You right, right, right. Yeah, he's, he's not a uh, you know, consistent player, but he always had style. Okay. So that's okay. what I really looked up to, and I always wanted to have style like him. Right, Luis Garcia. How about you, Jeff? For myself, I think the first coach that I, have, yeah. that I had was uh, Coach Lawrence. Lawrence okay. Lee, okay. who's actually uh, Gavin's dad. Right, okay. So, yeah, okay. I started like playing football at the, okay. uh, the age of maybe 6, 7 at okay. Tampines Rovers right. Youth Academy. And he was one of my first nice. first coaches and he really taught me the basics and really set me up for, for the next few years. So, I, I would say, yeah, Coach Lawrence, who I'm, who I'm still working with now at JSSL. It's, so, it, it's, it's yeah. wonderful, isn't it? It has yeah. come full circle. It started off yeah. with him and now you are... You know, yeah. with him, that's great. Yeah. How about you, Elias? The TV is definitely one of the, <laughs> the biggest influences. Um, yeah. yeah, just playing under the block and in the street soccer, so you see, you look up to older players who, who play really well, so those are some influence. And um, the late coach, Amin Nasir, you know, when, right. when I was in primary four, primary five, you know, you're a young boy, and then you're hearing stories about how he he overcame his injuries and then he, he played the way he played is he keep telling yeah. us to give hundred percent. So that's uh that played a big part in me growing up as a person and as a footballer as well. Nice. Did did you uh guys at that age, right, you, you talk about watching Luis Garcia, you talk about, you know, all these players that you watch on T V, Ronaldo even did you th- ever think that one day probably you play for Singapore, don the national colours? You know, at that age, even in primary school, do you, did you think that, hey, maybe I want to be like this guy? Or even watching, like you said, uh, the late uh, Amin, I, I want to put this on, the, the, the national jersey. Did you guys ever feel that way? Um, for me personally, it was never a long-term target. Uh. It was just a short-term target, as in the weekend I wanted to play football. Right. I wanted to do the skills that Garcia did in the weekday. Right. So I'll just keep it in mind and then on the weekend when I have my training sessions, I'll just do whatever I want. Right. So that was just my target. Yeah, you're just going with the flow and, uh, and doing it uh, at that time. How about you? Uh, yeah, obviously when you're, when you're younger, you just want to go out there and have fun. Yep. But at the same time, when I was playing with the Rovers Academy, right, we were... For myself, I was looking up to players like Mustafi and ah, Suti nice, and nice. Perez who they were playing, were, who they were playing were at, at Rovers. Peaks, right? yeah, so yes. we were just training outside the ah, Tampini Stadium. So nice, sometimes nice. We, were, we were able to watch their training sessions, some of their games and all that. We were even mascots for some games. Nice. So for myself, I always wanted to play for like a club like Rovers and yeah. also like also play for the national team. I so think those names that you mentioned, right, yeah. uh, Mustafi, who else? Uh, 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 Perez, Suti. Perez, yes. yeah. y- you, you look, th- those names that you mentioned, yeah. right, and you watch them play, 
those are real role models in terms of yeah. the way they play. We talk, and we're not even talking about the TV, right? We're talking yeah. about there, in, uh, yeah. you know, life. That is a wonderful <laughs> role model to have yeah. and, and to actually see and get influenced by. Elias? When I, because I grew up in Ishun, so, um, like, me and my friends would walk to the Ishun Stadium. And at uh. that point in time, it was Young Lions. Okay. They were there, uh, I think, under Fundy at that point of time. It was almost full house, Ishun Stadium. Yeah. So, it was at that moment I, I realised I also want to do this. Nice. Yeah. So, from then on, Every day, almost every day, I played football recess after school, until night time, until my my <laughs> parents have to shout and call yeah. for me to come home. So yeah, you know, not bad. You know, you 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 did all that, uh, played football for body till night, and you you're going to the U now. Perfect, right? Well done, <laughs> great job. Uh, family support. Let's talk about family support. I think it's very uh, important, and and of course, I know your dad. Uh, I know your parents as well from two thousand and seven, and you have great family support all of you right tell me about the support and, and how crucial it is so far at least right uh, from way back 2007 whether you you succeed whether you fail how was the support uh, Jeff we start with you Jeff I think it's very important to always have the support around you right especially as uh, footballers or professionals yeah uh, my parents were always there for me every training session they, yeah. would, they would try and send me to sessions pick me up from sessions so I was yeah. very blessed to have their support yeah and whatever that happened during my career, they were always there for, for me. So everything that's happened, I owe it to them. Like yeah. whatever's happened in my life, I really thank them. And yeah, it's very important to have that support, especially yeah. after a bad game, yeah. even after good games. Like my dad would say like, oh, you can improve on this, this yeah. and this. So yeah, it was very important to me. You know, I, it's very important that you say that. It's very crucial you say that as well, because we, we always talk about success, right? Some yeah. uh, The parents and, and what have you, the girlfriends and what have you. The, the, the support that you have when you're winning games, for example, but you, you, you pointed out when you are having a bad game, yeah. when yeah. you have not succeeded, when you are having an injury, for example, I think that comes in. Yeah. That's, That's when, the most yeah. important. Yeah. That's when you need it the most. Huh? Yeah. yeah, so uh, Adam, you, you uh, have just recovered, fully recovered from an ACL plus an MCL injury, right? How important was that uh, or was your family? I think when you're at your peak, uh, everyone's supporting you, even the people you don't know is supporting you. Everyone's saying, oh, you're the best, you're the best. But it really comes down to when you're at your lowest right. and you see who's still there with you, still by your side, still supporting you. And definitely it's your family. You know, for me, it's been my parents, my siblings, my wife. They've been there for me all this while and they always say that I'm able to come back. I'm able to come back stronger than before. And that really gives me the motivation because there are tons out there saying that I won't be able to reach my poten my level again. Are there? Definitely. Still is? <laughs> or still course. are? Of course, because as in it's such a major injury where most of players, when they get it, they stop football. And then, but, but then you see other role models like Hassan, yeah. like all these players, they have, I think, two, three ACL, in <laughs> three ACL injuries, yeah. but they are still out there at like 33, 34, yeah. still playing at full flight. So... These are my motivation, like these players are my motivation, but definitely it's the family members, the support that we are getting from them that really pushes us every single day. Uh, Elias, I know your dad, he comes for every game, every <laughs> every training sessions. He speaks, he or he, he, was, he was always speaking to me after training sessions in 2007. Uh, great support. Yeah, right? fantastic support. <laughs> Uh, he's always there, um, even even in, in training. So, you know, when, when I see him coming for trainings and uh, watching the trainings, you know, natural, you want to do your best to, to show your, your, your dad that, you know, you, you are good and you are improving. And besides the support, he also gives feedback and um, criticism, which can help me improve as well. So I think besides the support, um, all these kind of feedbacks from our parents also helped us. Was there the pressure? Like, for example, you had a bad game and you know you had a bad game and then in the car or whatever. For sure, for sure. Hey, Jeffrey, you, you were shit today, for example. Uh, Elias, what was that about? You know, you you, you can't, you know, that's, that's terrible. Yeah. Adam, can't even score a goal in front of goals. Right? Was there anything like that? Uh, for me, personally, 
It was my mom. <laughs> she, she knew. She barely knew about football, but she was saying, "Why didn't you play well and stuff?" My dad is, a, you know, my dad was a former footballer. Right. But then I didn't know until I was like eight. So he was a really low key guy. Okay. So he will even if I played badly, he will not say anything. He just say, "Okay, let's go home." He won't say anything about the game. If uh, and at home, and at home he wouldn't say anything too. So that's why I think I didn't have that much pressure. Right. He was just saying to enjoy myself. Like okay. you know, just play football just to enjoy, and then even when I turn professional, he's <laughs> he's giving me tips, but you know, very minimal. Like he says, you are your own player, so you know what to do. Uh, can you introduce your dad's name, please, right now? Uh, my dad is Swandi Kito. For those listeners who are listening in, uh, Swandi Kito is a perfect example of how a parent should be <laughs> in terms of uh, you know, being a parent, right? Because no, no, seriously, uh, this is not a joke, right? Because uh, it is so easy to. Uh, I spoke about this some time back as well with another guest, and it is so easy to get into the car when your son has just finished a game, finished a poor game, and then you going on and on <laughs> and on, and that really can demoralize you. And as well as giving instructions that are against the coach, yeah. you know, it has happened before. So I think, you know, absolutely brilliant, Mister <laughs> Swan Nikito. <laughs> right? How about you? Uh, Jeff, any any criticism in the car? Uh, slightly different approach, right? Maybe. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my dad was very candid. Okay. After every game, you you would know. <laughs> I mean, I I would know myself if I had a bad game. Yes, but when yes. I had a bad game, I would go into the car. Normally, it would be awkward silence for maybe three quarter of the of the ride. The last quarter <laughs> would be <laughs> so that the first three quarters I would be like look, like right. maybe using my phone every reflection day. time. Yeah, right, reflection right, time. Right, okay, right. what do I do? Uh, right, right. Then the last quarter would be yeah, just some constructive. Yeah. Criticism, I would say. Yeah, I think that's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fine. She's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was. It, it really helped me a lot. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Now let's let's move on. Right. We, let's go to two thousand and seven. Okay. And not many people know that most of the players that played in the YOG, uh, of obviously minus uh, Adam, also played in this tournament in in Saitama, Japan, in two thousand and seven. It was an under twelve tournament. Okay. And I I. I'm looking at the pictures in the picture here, right? Yeah. We've got Fasha, we've got people like Hanafi, we've got people like uh, you know, both of you as well. We've got I think Adam Ali, is it? Yeah, yeah. Ali. Adam Ali. Where is Adam Ali, by the way? Uh, he's uh in the uniform group service. I think he's right. in ICA. Ah, okay. Uh, I see Mohaimin in there as well. <laughs> right, another joker. <laughs> right. So not a lot of people know that, and you you guys are laughing at the, and mm. you just look at the picture here, right? I br- it brings back memories. Tell us about uh, 2007. Uh, we start off with Ilias. <laughs> oh, it was uh, <laughs> first time going for international tournament. I would say right. um, overseas and then going to Japan. You know, after training for a very long time, almost a year, because we had the Capital Land Futsal Tournament first. Yeah. To, to it was a good good tournament. Yeah, <laughs> which there's not. Like, there's no more of this kind of tournament there's anymore. There's no more of anything around it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think that was that was a it was a very happy moment when we were going off for that because you know training for one year, yeah. sixty plus seventy people, and then cut down to the last eighteen. Mm-hmm. And yeah. yeah, very interesting, you know, because we also had an homestay. Yeah. yeah. Homestay. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. So we stayed stayed with a couple yeah. of. Uh, I mean, we were split during into, the tournament itself. Yeah, yeah, during yeah. during the tournament, yeah. we were split into pairs, right? Pairs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then we stayed with like Japanese families. Yes, so it yeah. was a new experience going overseas and staying right. with with a new family. Right. Yeah. Adam, how was your experience? <laughs> okay, let's let's talk about how you guys were selected first. Yeah. Okay, and I I think you spoke about the futsal tournament, the yeah. side, uh, capital yeah. and so uh, so you guys a, a a bunch of you a group of you a huge uh, group of you were chosen, right? from that and then firstly just talk to us about the preparation and before that right who, who were your coaches <laughs> the one and only coach Robert <laughs> uh, who else um, coach Jake I think he was there as well yeah. 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 Coach, Robin. Robin. coach Robin coach Robin uh, coach Hyrule yeah coach Hyrule yeah. coach, coach yeah. Felipe yeah. Felipe was there for, I think. for a while for, yeah. for a while yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and yourself of course yeah <laughs> okay, thank you very much. <laughs> All right, just just to recap, I think uh, just to to uh, go through uh, the, the the group of co- coaches, right? I think the hit the hit uh, or the team manager was Coach uh, Robert, mm. and then uh, the the panel of coaches was myself, 
Robin Chitraka, mm. Jay Khan, and then the High Rail, who was the goalkeeper coach, mm. right? And I think that was the main group of uh, coaches who also went up to Saitama, mm. right? Tell us about the preparation in Singapore. Right, I think uh, Elias, you spoke about one year of preparation. Mm. How was the preparation? Did you guys learn anything? Because obviously, it was uh, your first uh, time being together mm. uh, for one year, like uh, of preparation, and then going for the tournament. Uh, tell me about the preparation, Adam. Um, for me, it was just pure enjoyment. Yeah, we had training sessions like almost every weekday, also. Actually, yeah. you, you guys were training like professionals, right? Yeah. Almost. I think almost every think almost day. Every day. Yeah. So, almost. that was a very good moment for me because because of that, my parents had to buy me a phone. <laughs> because after school, I still had to travel to, to the training ground. So, I got I got phone. 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 Yeah. So, I was so happy. And at what? 11, right? At 11. And my brother, who was 3 years older, he didn't get a phone yet. Yeah, so, he was jealous. But, you know, good things come to you. Uh. Right, right, yeah, right. So if I, you are talented, is it? <laughs> I think... It was just really fun. Like after school, you just looked forward to going to play yeah. football, and you know it was definitely a trial where you always had to try to do your best. But all in all, it's just playing football, and you know you were thinking like it's okay if you don't get it. But of course, deep down, you say yeah. you want to go to Japan, and for me because I don't really travel far for holiday, so that was my first ever time on. Nice. Or on an airplane, so it was really something uh, very memorable. Nice, nice. Uh, Jeff, I think it was probably the first time a lot of us had like form, like sort of like formal training yeah. for for a, yeah. for a goal. Yeah. Like so, I think it was the first time as young boys you had like proper training with like yeah. good structure, yeah. good coaches, like really. Right. So I think it was a good experience, yeah. especially as as Adam mentioned, going every day. You, that's what that's what you dream of as a young boy, just playing, going out, playing football. So. I think it's yeah. it's 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 a nice feeling, like you say, right? Yeah. It's like you are training school. like professionals. <laughs> yeah. You are eleven year olds, uh, training every day like professionals. You know, I, and I still remember, I still remember every single day of training. You guys were doing the ABCS with all the letters. Remember, just yeah. doing that over and over <laughs> again for the first twenty minutes or so, and then moving on to whatever drills, right? And and I think. That has helped you guys as well. You know, personally, not because I'm biased, but I think that has helped you at least in the foundation uh, part. And then now, speak about when you went up to Japan. I think it was uh, a, a <laughs> wonderful time as well. You know, we, we, people talk about the football, right? But it is the overall yeah. experience of being yeah. together. Uh, obviously, being away from your parents. Uh, it was a little bit tough for some of you. You know, I remember Hanafi was so <laughs> did, did you guys yeah. remember that? Hanafi was homesick. Yeah. Right? He, he was like going crazy. Yeah, he like. wanted to cycle home from Japan. <laughs> if yeah. the Japanese could do that, why not Hanafi? Yeah? <laughs> what? Cycle back? If they can walk, oh. walk from Japan to Singapore, then Hanafi can cycle. Right? No, no, but seriously, right? And I think it was a good experience. And then living with the, some of the Japanese families yeah. for the homestay. Let's talk about the football there, right? Yeah. We, I think we finished as the top Asian team. Or one of the top, or actually, in fact, the, yeah. the top Asian team there, we finished 16 or 17 out of uh, 12. 12, 12, out of 50. Uh, 12 out of 50 teams. Yeah. That That is a, a, a good uh, result, if you, if you ask me. But let's talk about, we, we talk about that, but the performance wise as well, I, I, I thought we did very well as well. You know, And talk about uh, the football itself, how was it there? I think looking at how we trained the year before going up there, uh, it really showed like structured training and yeah. proper planning and training almost professionally <laughs> really helps uh, really helps even at, even at a young age you know if if boys at like 11 and 12 can do it definitely older players with with better structure can can produce the yeah. same or even better but yeah the the guidance from coaches like you guys we played it was the first time playing uh, football uh, with a purpose yeah. yeah, it was enjoyable yet, you know, um, it was it was hard work and the, the hard work really paid off when, mm. when we dominated some of the teams there. Yeah. And going up there, we also see some South American teams yeah, and you can right. see how crazy talented they are at such a young age, you know. Uh, we played outside the main stadium. Yeah, the Saitama yeah. World Cup Stadium. The Saitama World Cup Stadium, right. Mm. And... Jeff, tell us about the facilities to our listeners who are listening 
at home, right? You are listening to this, right? Tell us about the facilities at Saitama. I mean, it was a dream just to like even look at the big stadium out there, and right. even the pitches outside. They had I don't know loads of pitches outside, and all the pitches were like flat, nice, <laughs> yeah. good short grass and yeah. everything. So it was, it was very very enjoyable to play on those on yeah. those pitches. Yeah. And even at the pitch, the, the picture that I'm seeing, right, uh, yeah. the, the one, look, look, look at the grass, right. It's just amazing. <laughs> and we are just talking about the pitches outside of the main yeah. stadium, you know. And there were like, like, uh, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 pitches outside, yeah. and uh, it was a great experience. Mm. Uh, you know, even at that age, the group of coaches who were there with you guys uh, could tell that there was something good that could emerge from that that uh, group of boys. And mind you, I think Adam, uh, Adam went for that. Uh, but there were some players who were left out, you know, who were probably, I don't want to say the word dropped at that age, but who did not make the grade. I think Mahade was one of them. Remember Mahade did yeah. not make that team yeah. and he was a special player as well. He, even now, I, I feel that he was a special player. So, you know, I, we, we, we thought that would be uh, a stepping stone for most of you, right? Then we fast forward three years, right? And obviously when we came back, you all went your separate ways. There was, uh, I, in fact, I think that was the last Saitama tournament ever. Yeah. I think that there wasn't any tournament after that. Let's speak about YOG 2010, and this is yeah. where Adam will take a break, but he will also come come on in with his uh, insights, and uh, his uh, he will be a pundit here. Yeah. All right, he will be a special pundit. More than happy to. All right, YOG 2010. Yeah, you all uh, were selected, obviously, for that team. Now, tell me about uh, the preparation. How long was the preparation for YOG for this special tournament? It was six months. Because yeah. we, we were at the we were at the Asian Youth Games the year before. Right. Under the late coach Siva. Yes. So we were training as a group already uh, from under fourteen onwards. Right. We okay, we didn't really perform as well as we do, we would have liked at right. the AYG. Right. Then after Coach Siva passed away then there was a bit of uh, maybe one, two months without training and then yeah. we had as like a good six months under yeah. Coach Kade. Okay. Kade Yahya. So that six months, well, we would we learned probably maybe two years worth of <laughs> right. of of tactics of everything, and we were really really ready for for the competition. Uh, yeah. so so all in all, Kade took you all for six months. Yeah, roughly six, roughly six. Seven and months. the players were yeah, and yeah. the the players were chosen from the sports school. It was a mixture of uh, sports school and uh, mainstream kids. Obviously, there was like some leftovers from the the year before the right. AYG. Okay. There's like 25 players from that point of time. Okay. So, um, Kade, Coach Kade did his re-evaluation and the selection from there. I wasn't in the AYG. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. So, it was it was nice uh, knowing a fresh set of eyes was coming to <laughs> to judge the team. And right. I was fortunate enough to, to be in the team for YOG. Right. Now, tell us about uh, Kade. Uh, uh, Adam, have you played under Kade? Uh, I, I trained with them quite a number of times with Coach Kadi. During that YOG? Uh, yeah, because there were rumours where they were saying that I could play with them and then yeah. suddenly everything just went away so I just went back to my team. Why? I don't know, because I think it was the age, uh, age group thing. So at yeah. first they thought they wanted to combine. Right. But then I think FA decided to just keep it at the 95s. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So so how was Kadi? A uh, few sessions but it felt like years. <laughs> it was so tiring. I never felt that kind of training at youth level before. So I I wasn't very happy to leave, but I was quite happy. <laughs> well, you were in two minds. Seriously. Yeah, because it was quite hard. Uh, the first few sessions. Were you I lazy, came, Adam? Uh, I wouldn't say. Uh, I was lazy. Maybe I I didn't like to run, but with football, I think I'll do anything. But you know, you know the build up to the proper session where you had to do the warm ups and you know, Coach Kadi's warm ups were. Oh, yeah. Really long. He was just doing I don't know like all this fitness <laughs> stuff, and I was really frail as a kid. So I was always like, oh, I cannot do this. I cannot do that. Right. I think okay. during that period was the first time we actually did like pre warm up <laughs> activation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So during the training sessions were intense. Every day right. was tiring, but he instilled that kind of like belief in you to right. come come back every session, and yeah, it was it was really right. very good preparation. So right, you, yeah. uh, no, you, you talk about uh, the, the physical aspects, right? The fitness yeah. part and what have you, Adam, yeah. talk, talk about that, right? But football-wise, yeah. was it good? I mean, in terms of tactical yeah. stuff, yeah, he was really yeah. spot on with that. Right. He was brilliant, like, teaching us different things. At, at that age, we weren't really right. 
aware of all these tactical stuff right. that you can do on the pitch. Right. But he introduced it from day one. Right. He was introducing low block, mid block, right. high pressing. Okay. He was every session. It was a different thing. Okay. Working together as a team, as a unit. He was really, really. He left no sto uh, stone unturned. Now, as you if say. if yeah. did you did you uh, catch the one with Haris Harut, the the podcast, the one, yeah. Yeah. the one with Haris Harut. Remember, he sent Haris Harut back home, yeah. Yeah. right? So so that's that's Kadi, right? Yeah. He, you don't toe the line, <laughs> you're, you're gone, right? Uh, man management wise, yeah. was how was he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, as you say, he's a very intense, intense yeah. character, very. Uh, authoritative, but at the same time, he had that side to him where you could come to him with anything, okay. like anything about football, about even your your school, your personal life. He was that kind of coach that really cared for okay. your well-being. Right. And yeah, we just felt that his character, everything about him, made us want to play for him and run through brick walls for yeah. him. Nice. So he was that just that kind of that kind of character. Yeah, he he did seem fierce and maybe unapproachable <laughs> with the training. But there was one time I think he sensed like I was I was not really right in my my mind. You know, I was yeah, going uh, crazy. No, 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 I was having some. Uh, I was a bit distracted at that point of time. Right. Uh, with what girlfriend? With, Girls with are... school, <laughs> school, and yeah, some personal problems. Then he he came up to me and <laughs> and he and yeah he, he put a his hand over my shoulder and like yeah spoke to me and that's where I I really understand like he's he's really a caring guy outside right. of the. The first set, you know, right, mm. and the uh, yeah, he was. Remember the first our first session with him at sports school. Well, the first session, yeah, he brought us in for video video yeah. session. Right, he put on the uh, AYG okay. AYG yeah. video. Yeah. Yeah. It's like just talking normally, and we were like just listening and yeah. like watching. He did some analysis. Yeah. Right, I think it was like maybe the first few times we were in that yeah. kind of setting. Okay, okay. In, a, in a classroom. Right started shouting and saying like forget about AYG this is like YOG we're focusing now and it was yeah. really really <laughs> the first time we were actually yes. shouted at in a yeah. classroom by, yeah, by a coach and like we knew that he meant business were you there, there yeah. this one? no, no. no. Okay. thankfully yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, always, I always remember that, that moment nice yeah. nice nice yeah. uh, you all even went up to London yeah. right for a training trip uh, how was that I think you guys beat the Spurs Academy team in the process yeah. right uh <laughs> Now, just, just going into the YOG tournament, right, how was the team spirit like? Did you think that, okay, we, we're going to do something special, maybe, I don't know, uh, get to the semis, win the tournament? What was the morale like? The, the morale was pretty good. We've been playing some pretty good games along the way. Yeah. It was only after the London trip that I felt we can really do this. After, nice. after we held our own against uh, West Ham Academy, we yeah. lost that game 2-1. But in, in the last game, we, we won the Spurs Academy, so that's right. where we think we thought, you know, yeah, we can we can really achieve something. Right. But not many people would have uh, gave us that target because of how we did the year before. Yeah. So it was nice knowing there was no pressure right. on us, but we still wanted to, to go out there and prove people wrong. Just just going back a little bit, right? You you talk about the the London trip and what have you, the preparation. The you you spoke about structure as well, a proper structure and, and what have you, and the people behind that. The, the who was your assistant coach, the assistant coach to Kadeh? Abdulano. Abdulano. Yeah. Who else was in the uh, were in the team in terms of the mm. team behind the team? The whole the whole team. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah just just naming um, names so that you know. Uh, Ife, Ding Ife. I, Ding Ife, right? Yeah, we had a uh, shout out to you, my friend. Yeah. Who else? <laughs> Yeah, uh, sports psychologist. Yeah. Go goalkeeper coach was Coach Jacob. Coach Jacob, Jacob shout out to you. Who yeah. else? The psychologist. Yeah. yeah. Sanjana. Sanjana Kiran. Yeah. Sanjana Kiran, shout yeah. out to you. You are uh, also a, a silver fox, I think. With your, your hair turning uh, silver, right? Uh, Sanjana, shout out to you yeah. as well. Right. So, yeah. so, so you guys have had a proper uh, structure. You know, and I think that's very important. You know, we talk about the, the players, right? But you need to have a team behind the team. Yeah. And that is very important. You look at all the best teams in the world, right? All yeah. the best teams in the world. You talk about your favorite team, Liverpool, and what have you. <laughs> They've got everything. Every single yeah. thing. The dietitians, the... the yeah. If someone to massage your toes or, or whatever. <laughs> they, they have everything to the minute detail, yeah. right? And I think that is very important. And that is... Can, is it safe to say that that was also one of the reasons why you guys were pretty successful? I think it was a very big reason okay. like there was a whole team of staff that were there for us yes. as young boys yeah. 
14, 15 year olds. Right. We needed direction, we needed guidance, and we had that leading up to the games. Yeah. We had sports psychologists teaching right. us about how to handle pressure, how yes. to handle the media, uh -huh. and all that. So, what to say, what not to say, yeah. how, what to think about before games, what visualization. <laughs> Jeff, what not to say? To the media. Different <laughs> kinds of things that <laughs> I shouldn't mention now. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. right so, what yeah. about Christy? Oh, yeah, we had physio, we had physio. a physiotherapist, okay. right. we had everything, the, we had a the whole works, team yeah. of stuff, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we we felt that before right. before the, the games, we, we, we were fully prepared and I think that really helped us uh, leading into the games. Yeah. How, yeah. Was, how was donning the national, so-called national jersey yeah. for the YOG for the very first time, the very first game? Yeah. Who was that against? Uh, it was against uh, Zimbabwe. Right. Yeah, I still remember the first time running out onto the onto the pitch for the warm up. Yeah. Because uh, we had the experience of the AYG it was maybe quarter full, half full. I don't know. <laughs> no, I didn't play that. Yeah, <laughs> something, something, yeah, something, <laughs> something like that. But then, like when we ran out, we di didn't expect it to be how it was. Like right. almost full stadium for the first for the first game and running out. <laughs> with the, the with crowd the, and everything. Yeah, with the crowd and everything, it really almost got to us. But you know, Coach Kade was there to like calm us down and like yeah. keep us focused and all that. But just putting on the jersey, lining up Majula Singapura before the game it was just it was an amazing, amazing feeling. Adam, you I think had or have the privilege of donning the national team flag for a, a senior side. Right. Tell me how is that different from a, a youth side? I think for me it was because when the first time I donned the jersey was when I was 17. Yeah. It was quite a bit of pressure for me. Like I had, um, you know. Against who? Um, I think it was against Myanmar if yeah. I recall properly. Yeah. Um, it was running out into the pitch with players that I always looked up to. Yeah. It was players like Haris, right. uh, Bayaki and stuff. And you right. know, it's like in a big, in a, in a blink of an eye, I was just there with right. them running out together. Okay. So it was really something for me to, you know, try yeah. to calm myself down and it wasn't it wasn't like so easy I felt like it was quite hard going to training sessions with them and stuff because I felt that uh, I don't know, in, in me I felt that it was really not a reality. It was really, you know, Do you think you were ready? Um I think I was ready but I think um in a sense, I was telling myself that, oh, these are senior players. Okay. I I was uh, really a youth player, yeah. but uh, I think as as years go by, I realized that um, that was an approach I should have taken differently. Did anybody? No, I, sorry about the YOGs. Uh, okay, we digress a bit. I think this is a very good point, right? Did anybody put a hand around your shoulder, an arm around your shoulder, and tell you, okay? You are 16, you are 17, or you could be 12, I don't care. You are in the national setup, okay? You are good enough, right? Play, you're good enough, you play in the first team, right? Did anybody at that stage when you first came up, right, tell you that? Because I think that's very important, you know, because you, you can't feel overwrought by the occasion. You need a senior player to put a, an arm around you and say that, right? So did, did anyone even a coach or anyone like that? I think definitely coach, uh, at the time was Coach Burn. Yeah. Um, I think he came in and then he, he talked to me quite a bit yeah. because he said that he he believed that I okay. was a very uh, good player to be in the national team and yeah. stuff. And right. so I, I felt like he had trust in me. And I think um, whatever that I've been through with the national team, it really made me who I am today. Right. Um, be it the negatives, the positives. I, I took a lot from those times, yeah. those one, two years. And I think it was uh, really a fruitful experience. And yes, I, I did not uh, come into the scene to be uh, you know, a showstopper. I did not come into the scene to you know start scoring goals and whatever, but it really gave me the experience that I needed to be in the national team now. Right. Uh, no, just going back to the YOG, and again, it was also a proud moment for me, right? Because I think that was the very first uh, commentary gig that I got. The very first, you know, I haven't done anything like that before, and that was my very first time that I, I had a gig like that. And uh, it was to commentate on a group of boys whom I've coached before, three years before that, right? It was a, a, a good moment. Now, you guys finished third, right? Yep. And... Uh, it was a wonderful tournament, you know. I think it sport in general and, and obviously football brings people together. 
and yeah. you know during that period it was like wow you know mm. and people can say about the, the the quality of the opponents and this and that it, it doesn't matter because you guys needed to be there you guys need to be turn up for games needed to show uh, Singaporeans and, and what have you and people watching at home that you can do the job and you guys did the business and I think it's not it wasn't only about the uh, the results it was the performances as well right so how was that <laughs> feeling you know getting Singaporeans together how was that like Jeff yeah. I think after the first game it was amazing because yeah. we trained so hard for it and to put up a good performance yeah. and it really really gave us lots of confidence and looking ahead after that game we were really excited to just get on the pitch again to see you know to play in front of the, yeah. the big crowd and everything 15 15 year olds just running out playing for their country is was, was, was just like it was a dream yeah. so yeah we're playing against those op- level of opposition whether people are saying it's good or bad i think we turned up as you said yeah. we turned up we played like how we wanted to play and we we did ourselves and our, our family is very proud yeah. yeah, we just wanted more of that. To be honest, we <laughs> wish the tournament went on longer, with yeah. more with more games. Uh, you know, obviously, fantastic to see friends and families in the crowd. But you know, to see the Jalan Besar Stadium being fully packed, people climbing over the car park to, <laughs> to, yeah. to, to catch the game, mm. uh, it's a wonderful feeling. Yeah, yeah. I think, but whole, I think yeah. this this was the start of the next two three years where youth football brought. Um, the crowds in, you know, after that there was the Lion City Cup yeah. for, for two years. Yeah, and you know, this this period, like, there was a lot of, um, you know, uh, future projection, like, you know, football is... The golden, the golden yeah. generation, so to speak, yeah. right? That's a, that's a good sec to the next part, right? Uh, <laughs> Post YOG, you know, amidst all the euphoria and, and what have you, you want, or whatever you want to say, right? <laughs> in your own words, Right? Uh, what happened after that? Tell me. <laughs> oh, what happened? Uh, I think we were forgotten for quite a while. Or I don't know, some things were happening out there. So we, we didn't have uh, trainings together as a, as a team for, for a few months. We still went back to our own schools to train. Myself in the sports school, we still had training. Yeah. So I, I think like not training together as a team for, for like four or five months. Um, was a big blow to the progress. Yeah. yeah. Because you know, if if we stayed together for that four five months, we played. Uh, if we continue playing games, uh, things would have been different. But just that, the the period of not having uh, training for that few months, you kind of know. Um, looking back in hindsight, you kind of know like where everything was going. You know, if like straight after the competition there's no follow-up for a few months you kind of know what it'll be like down the road right yeah. yeah yeah i mean it was a great tournament we wanted we wanted to stick together as a team yeah we were told that we would stick together you were told by who by fes right. player, the, the people high up that we yeah. would stick together have the same setup that we were having previously yeah somewhere along the line that didn't happen and yeah like now looking back it felt as if like we were being used just for the YOG and after that we were just thrown by the by the side. Uh, yeah. Speak speak about, you, you spoke about the team behind the team, what happened behind, to the team itself? Not not, not the football team, we're yeah. talking about the, the, the panel, the, the group of coaches, the assistant coaches. Mm-hmm. What happened to them with respect to this particular team? I mean, I'm not really sure what happened but I think there were some disagreements between FAS and yeah. and Coach Kadir. I'm not, not too sure but right. he, he left. Right. So once he left, everything started to, to fall apart in terms of the coaching staff and everything. So. Right. We were just waiting on the wings, waiting to start our training again, but not knowing what was actually happening. Okay. So we were just waiting. Right. We were ready to train. We we wanted to train, so we were just training with our schools, yeah. playing our school competitions and all that. Yeah. And probably maybe six months after that, then there was a plan, a plan for us. Right, what was the plan after six months? We. What was the plan? We had we had a, we had a <laughs> we just started training again with a with a new with a new coach, I think. Right. Yeah. And this was who? was coach uh, Taku, oh, was a okay. Japanese, okay. Japanese coach. And, ha- and how was that? It was different, a like different okay. approach from, from coach Kade. I think, I mean, obviously bringing in a foreign foreign yeah. coach is always going to be different from having a local coach who knows yeah. knows you inside out. Yeah. I mean, nothing against, nothing against him. He was a very 
experienced coach yeah. back in, in Japan. But when he came over, he hardly spoke a word of English. Okay. And it was very hard to yeah. gel with, right, with him. Right. I mean, he had his own tactics that he wanted to bring across. But and how, I, yeah. Okay, then how often was these training sessions? And, and he, this was with that, that particular YOG team? Yeah, it was so it was more or less the the same team right maybe and a few additions yeah. and so how often yeah. was these training sessions it was every day right yeah, yeah it was okay. every every day okay. and it felt at the time because the communication wasn't really right. there he tried to bring his own tactics but i think we we were yeah. playing with the memory of like <laughs> Kade's tactics so right, right. i think that's what brought us and really i don't know we did decently i think we did pretty decent at the Lion City Cup, I think based on yeah. the previous tactics, so we're still trying to play with that okay. mentality and all that. So okay. that's that's pretty much how it went. Uh, let's speak about the Lion City Cup, right? In the two years after that, uh, there was two Lion City Cups, right? Or, or yeah. two successive ones? Actually, okay. there were. I think there were Three. others. Yeah, yeah but, but then we, we didn't. Yeah, we of course. Involved, yeah, yeah that's so you you guys, like more or less, played in the next two yeah. uh, tournaments, and. You guys, we played, one, we, yeah. played, we played the first one. Yeah, I played, played, one. played I both. Yeah, yeah, you played two. You're correct. Yeah. And and the team finished third and second respectively. Mm. All right. And uh, along the way, you guys beat teams like Newcastle, mm. Juventus, Ajax in the group stages, and then and lost out. Obviously, right? How was that Lion City Cup uh, tournament, Adam? Um, the first Lion City, um, I was fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. So, it was really a different experience because the year before we watched. The, the seniors, the 95s, playing at the YOG and all of us, all the 96s were like, we should be there, we, yeah. we, we can play this game, you know. We, you know, we always play against them and stuff, so we know that. And our coach but back then was Coach Dejan Yeah, He was a brilliant coach, I would yeah. say. He was an excellent coach. He, he made the team, you know, became such a good team, in, even in the Southeast Asian region. We were always the top team, like top three, yeah. second, first, so... Um, we were actually quite indestructible uh, and yeah. the 95 had to agree that they always used <laughs> to us. Uh. Yeah. They can't really. really? Us. We, we yeah. played a few friendly games and it was really, really tough. Uh, yeah. okay. I think we, we, we had a lot of speedy players like yeah. Zufami, right. uh, Azar back then. Okay. And all the players were. We were such an attacking team. Even Aravin, who was a winger at the start, turned out <laughs> to be a centre defend, yes, so defender for us. So our whole team was based on attack and it really worked for us. So. Okay. We really enjoy our football because football you only enjoy when you're attacking, uh, to me. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know. Speaking from an attacking player, yeah. <laughs> coming from an attacking player, yeah. Yeah. So, the first um, Lion City, we were all you know so happy to play because we were expecting like oh okay, there will be crowd coming in like the YOG and stuff you know. But then when when the game started, I think all of us just thought about the game. We. It was a decent crowd, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. was. I think brilliant. it was. Uh, prior to because the YOG brought in some yeah, yeah, fans for right. the youth level so I think they just continued to watch them actually yeah. but then they filled it into the Singapore team so I think they yes, just yes. wanted to just watch us uh. so I think we actually did pretty well as well and I think most of the, my teammates at that point of time were excellent players uh, we had Mate we had right. Mohelmi right. we had Amiru Ali yeah. who yeah. was skinny <laughs> and shit last time <laughs> yeah so and doing ever so well now for yeah, Tampines. I, I think Amir Ali is such a brilliant player. He's so <laughs> unpredictable yet so effective. Was he a centre back then or? Uh, he was a central midfielder. Okay. okay. So I think that's why he's really flourishing at the centre yeah, midfielder yeah. role. Uh, so that was Lion City Cup, right? Mm. And players, and we talk about players moving up the ranks and, and, and what have you. You just had news that Donny Vanderbeek just signed for Man U or on the verge for forty million, mm -hmm. right? And he played in the Lion City Cup, right, <laughs> against you guys. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm sure there are players out there, and and you guys beat them, right? You you guys mm -hmm. beat yeah. Ajax in the group stages yeah. and then lost out in the final. Yeah. And how how is this possible, in 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 terms of our youth players? You know, I think you you spoke about that, Elias. You know, the follow up and the structure moving up from, you know, youth levels and 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 what have you. In your opinion, as players, you are still a player. Both of you have so called retired from pro, foot, uh, football. Where do you think? Uh, where where do you think, 
uh, things have gone wrong? Tell me in your own words. Um, personality, personally, I think it's because of the um, the support that we are having here. Okay. It is indifferent in sports, for example, over here. It's more of a leisure point of view. Like everyone's looking at it. Oh, you're playing football. Oh, it's just for leisure. It's not a career. It's not, you know, it's not a job. And then they'll be saying that it's not something that you can sustain for long and stuff. So um, I think that over in Europe, for example, like when we were younger, you know, we could compete with them. We were on the same level. Yeah. I, I'm I'm not afraid to say that. Mm. Right? We are actually, you know, able to compete with them. But then once we reach 18, 19, and then we, the gap is so prominent. Yeah. And I think it's just because of their emphasis. Because over here, it's definitely... Definitely the right way is for education to be first, school to be first. But I think over there, it's the motivation for them to be professionals. It is really there because it really is a game changer. Once you're a professional, your life changes. You you truly become a pro- professional. You, I think there's no worry about money or anything anymore. But has that got also to do with the hunger, right? It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, I don't know, a chicken and egg situation where... You, you say that you have to study first, but then if you know that if you don't study, then you've got to really, really put all your eggs in one basket and really <laughs> work hard at the football part, right? Go all out, mm-hmm. right? And, and that's where the survival part kicks in, and then you get really, really good at football, right? So isn't that a, a, a chicken and egg situation for you, Jack? I think it's tough, yeah. As you, as you mentioned, like, all these... Like the, the teams that played in the Lions League Cup, Liverpool, Newcastle, yeah. like even Liverpool, we had like Curtis Jones, yeah. Nico Williams, right. who are now playing in the Liverpool first team. Exactly. Van der Beek, who's now going to be signing for yes. Manu. So, they were, we, we were able to compete with them yes. at the youth level. And the difference, I think, is like they have the end goal, which is a good end goal for Singapore. Singapore football is set to say now, even if you're a professional footballer, that's not certain as well. Yeah. Like whether you will be able to sustain that as a career, right. and as youth, now I think, I think maybe a bit different now than when it was maybe ten twenty years ago. Where now education is just as important, so it's very difficult for youth players now to see. Do Do yeah. you feel the same way, Adam? He he just said that even as a professional footballer here in Singapore right now, it is not that safe. To be honest, it's not just in Singapore; it's everywhere. Right. Because I've been in Mets and yeah. I've seen players who are doing so well at my age going to train with the professionals and being professionals at age 16. But now they are in the lower league. They are even playing semi-pro. Yeah. So honestly, it's not just Singapore. Yeah. It's just that Singapore has a limited number of teams. Yeah. But over over the world, it's the same situation because only the best gets to play. Right. Only the best get the best contract. Right. So you have to always be the best so that you will get a good contract. And if one season you you <laughs> decide to not do well and then the next season you know that you're out of a contract, you have to find somewhere else. And yeah. at first I also thought the same way as Jeff. I thought it's just Singapore. But it's really everywhere. Yeah. Like even my friends who were doing well in Mets, now I'm talking to them and they were playing in a low league in Greece, for example. Okay. Right. Mm. Elias, yeah. anything to say? Like... Uh, Good point uh, brought up there. Like the end goal is important, but you know everywhere around the world you face the same problem. But the thing is, if we do have a better structure, then we we are um, better equipped to to have a, a gauge of how our youths will be able to do, you know, and the targets for our youths. And I think with with a proper structure to 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 have that sort of balance between sports and study especially in Singapore, can be better. Although we have the sports school and we have some JCs or Polytechnic that emphasize on sports, you know, um, there is still too much pressure, you know, whether you should be just studying or just focusing on sports. Because we all know in Singapore, studies is very important. Throughout my life studying, I've always been, you know, balancing. And trying to to balance both of it is, is... a bit tiring and uh, uh, it's it's not easy because you know if you have to study then you can you know, stay up late to study then you can <laughs> train 100% <laughs> and stuff like that and then if you are focusing on football then you won't you won't be able to give your best in studies so there, there must be a um, leeway I would say 
you know for you to to focus on on one and there must be enough support not just through the four years you know throughout because you see in youth uh, teams overseas they still send their uh, their boys to to study mm. you know Adam was in maths he said he still had to go to school right yeah and then go for training I think if if you can sort that out then we will be in a slightly better playing field to to have youth step up into professional football and I think that's one way we can we can progress so we don't have to keep giving the the excuse like oh because we have to study or because we don't have the resources fix this first then when we get there then we can reflect on whether you know our system is is good or not but if you don't have all this then you know it's it's, it's very hard to progress forward uh I, i've got to say this before we move on right this uh episode isn't about uh bashing anyone it, it isn't about uh <laughs> talking about talking silly about uh, anything uh we, we we're just talking about opinions and let's face it right and all around the world we, we talk about adam later on all around the world if a certain group of players have done well for example in 2010 it doesn't mean that that same group of players will do or will, yeah. will still be around in 2020 right the attrition rates are very high for youth football but what uh, i i guess what elias and uh, uh jeffrey was talking about is at least have a proper structure yeah. so that if things fail then we know that you know we've tried our best yeah. and, and stuff like that yeah, so it's, it's yeah. not just about football it's about other sports in singapore yeah, as yeah well, of course yeah, yeah. uh i want to talk about mets adam how was the experience there in mets I think as uh, a young boy deciding to remove Can you speak a little bit about uh can you speak a little uh, of their language? Uncle me je oublie lovely. What does, what <laughs> does that mean, my friend? A little bit but I forgot most of it. Uh. <laughs> okay. Because it's been I don't know, it's been 7 years since I've been there. Right, right, right. And you know the last time that I spoke French was with Serena Camara. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes, uh, yes. So, you know, because I was playing on the left with him so he's always come with communicating okay. with me in french sometimes that, that's a good way to confuse the opponents <laughs> yeah because sometimes we will say something in french and then the the locals will not like what <laughs> they're saying yeah. right so so how was that experience like um, tell me the differences you know between mets and our youth football and, and what have you um to be honest the the only main difference that i saw was the hunger in the place ah right as in training sessions were same uh, how can you change a training session like Yes, of course it's the the big Europe everyone saying football is the best there but I think I know that even Singapore we're looking at the bigger teams to learn how they train. So we're doing the same thing over here but it's the hunger in the the boys even at such a young age at 16 17. What do you mean by hunger? Give me an example. I think um the players they come to training sessions like uh like it's a war. Right. Because they know that it's a very difficult um uh, Um, it's very difficult to be a professional footballer so to break through to become a professional footballer because when I went there I was an aspiring professional player so most of the players were on aspiring contracts so we had to break through to get the professional contract and then every year there will probably be one out of the whole 20 that will get a professional contract like a long term one so everyone was pushing for that and I think over there the all of them knew that if they made made it professional for the first year it will be hard for them to come out of the professional scene because that means they are of a certain level so everyone was going into training like it's a war like you know <laughs> like um training sessions were they were not rough they were really hard yeah so it really like made me shocked because in singapore sometimes training sessions were just like having fun You come down, you see your friends, you just laugh about. Play monkeys. Yeah, you play monkey and then you laugh about blah 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 and then you you're done with training. You go home the next day. But over there it's like game day every single day. And at first I I couldn't believe why why it's like that. Like I couldn't yeah. take it like why is it not so chill? Like is it's just football. But then I realized that all of them are trying to uh, become professionals and it is different over there. Right. When you are professional it's it's a whole lifestyle you you live like a professional footballer and it's different. So um it's really just the hunger of the players. Any players that uh has has made it from that team 
uh, anyone who's gone up and, and um, I think the latest one would be not the latest one like he was always um, um, ready to be professional since young right. Right? it was uh, Maxwell Kovne. Okay. he he scored against um, I don't know who against the Champions League recently okay. he was okay. playing he's playing he for Lyon right, right, yeah. right so he's uh, from my batch 96 right he's always been like a big player back yeah. then okay. and to see him staying as a big player or is something big because over there the the talent pool is so much that you can just follow anything anytime you know there's there's three uh, two things rather I, I picked up from there right number one training sessions are the same I'm talking about the drills and what have you and I've always said this right you, you can talk about Europe and what what have you the world-class teams or whatever training sessions drills you can just pick it up from YouTube Right? So it's the same. What, whatever we do, maybe in Singapore, it is the same over there. Because what, whatever drills, you can find it on the net. Now, the second thing is, like what you said, is the hunger. Right? That, that, that is the difference. All right? And that was what I was trying to tell you guys about. Right? It is survival mode. Because there, you either make it or you break it. And that's it. There's no in-betweens and what have you. And that's why they are... So tell me, Adam, right? Why are we not hungry enough? Is there a reason? And like you said, right? You you went there and you, and you said that why are we doing this? Why why is it like that? And then when like you said when you come back, it's like you know we just play our monkeys and and, and training is at five o'clock. We come down at four fifty five. I'm not talking about professional clubs. I'm talking about even at school school uh, uh, systems, right? We come down at four forty five, have a kick about, have fun. Right? It is supposed to be fun, but. If you want to get there, then you better take it seriously, right? So why are we different, Adam? I think it's because we're in Singapore. We're <laughs> in a first world country. country. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you, how do I say, you don't have to look at Europe. You just look at our neighbour. Yeah. You yeah. just look at the footballers there. Yeah. It's either they, they become professionals and they earn big bucks, or they still live in poverty sometimes. Right. And right. that is the driving factor. Right. In Singapore, you don't make it professionally, there's school there's job for you out there yeah. and you can work in an office and right. just do eight Grab. to five job mm. there's, there's nothing right. wrong with it yes, and yes. it's easy to find money here but over in other countries for example in the closer countries like southeast asian countries like thailand vietnam yeah. you don't become a footballer and then you what you are just hoping to find a job and right. it's really hard so over here is the comfort of having all the luxuries like even if you don't earn much you earn a a normal pay but then you can still have a nice dinner every single week has your attitude changed adam when when as, as in from bats right when you came back has your attitude changed in terms of damn i'm i'm good i'm on survival mode even though even though there's something to fall back on like you said singapore because we are in singapore there's something to fall back on right has has your attitude changed uh definitely i think for me right now like like what jeff said like it's not professional football is not something that um is a certain once even you turn professional right like it's something that maybe the next year you won't even have a contract so to me i always feel that way yeah so that it pushes me to you know to keep staying in the game because it's not an easy thing to stay a professional yeah. in singapore like there's so many teams and there's yeah. and there's only six teams that you can be in yeah not counting agurex and stuff so it's it's a tough trade but it is worth it because i feel that it's something that we love to do. Yeah. And, and, and I'm, I'm very happy that you're saying that because I think the only way I feel, personal view here, to do well in Singapore in terms of the football part is is from within. Because like you said, right, we, we already have everything. We, even if we don't make it, we can make it by doing something else. Even, like you said, you know, coaching and what. Even the smallest of things, I think we can earn money, right? But... It has has to come from within the discipline, the attitude, and, and what have you. Because nobody put a, a a gun to Ronaldo's head and tell him you better be the best that you can. It's yeah. within. It's the same thing with all the best players in the world. You know, I think, and and that I think is the takeaway from this. Adam, well done, right? You guys, you you guys must wish that you had this opportunity, right, to go out there and, and play in a in a, or had a stint abroad, right? So, where would you want to go besides Liverpool? <laughs> uh, I think Jeff. when back when back when I was a bit younger, anywhere anywhere overseas would have been nice, right. just to get a different experience of right, how right. football is played in a different country. So right. 
even if it's in England, France, anywhere, yeah. I would have taken the opportunity to just get that experience. It is? Yeah. The, during the 2017 SEA Games, you know, playing in front of the, the, the Malaysian crowd, <laughs> like 50,000, you know, like every footballer wants to play in right. front of big crowds. So anywhere with a big crowd yeah. um, would have been fantastic. But yeah, um, what Adam was speaking about, I can I can attest to the to the I can confirm about that unpredictability because you know I was I I had a contract last year I was playing and all of a sudden this year I'm not playing, mm-hmm. you know, um, in a short span of three years I was playing in the Sea Games fifty thousand crowd and then <laughs> now um, not having a, a contract playing football yes it's unpredictable and definitely. It's it's yourself from within the mentality, yeah. you know. As as you as you go on, but the the feeling I get is most of the time we feel comfortable, even though we are already in that position. You know, there's no there's no way forward. Yeah. There's no target set. You know, because we we feel like we already made it. Um, when we make it to a Premier League team. And you know we're playing in Aztec. We we don't. There's very little uh, room to 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 grow in that aspect. You know, okay. like that's that's what I feel um, playing in the in the clubs uh, in the past few years. So the mentality from within is is very important, and how the coaches and management and um, FA put. Uh, like motivate the players is right. is very important. I can see that there's a lot of steps taken, and I hope the the future will be even better in terms of setting the mindset right. Right. Yeah. And, uh, <coughs> sorry, and I think uh, the Lion City Sailors are doing a, a pretty good job. You know, mm-hmm. although they are new, uh, we're talking about the owners, the new owners. I think they are doing a great job uh, in terms of you know, how things are being run. So let's hope that continues. You know, in the in the right path, and Adam, they are in a at least at the right club, right? Uh, let's speak a little bit about the Young Lions uh, project, right? How was that? I think both of you played. I think Adam played the uh, Young Lions team and uh, Elias as well. How, how was that like, playing in the team? And do you think it has been a success? Um, for me, I came in at the year 2014. Right. It was when um, the 1992s, they were also called the golden generation right. and back then because they had uh, Fares, Sahil, yeah. Shafigani, right, right, right. so um, they were you know good senior players to me I was seven, 17 or 18 and then they they guided me quite a bit and the team was quite strong but then I think um, being such a young team you had um, insufficient experience right. in some aspect so um, we didn't do too well in the 2015 SEA Games uh, back at home in Singapore. Yeah. Uh, we were, you know, expected to perform to actually go into the finals and stuff, but we crashed out in the group stages and it was very stressful uh, for me. At 19, I was 19 at that time, and it was quite stressful because it was the first, I would say, downfall that I really felt. Okay. So, um, but I think the Young Lions project at that point of time was quite decent okay. like the players they were um, they were coming up from the whole li- young lion system was were quite decent and they were ready to play in the S League in the normal team okay. in the bigger team so I think it was a very good stepping stone and from what I knew back then it was from the NFA 18 and then you progress to the young lions and it was only maybe about two or three players from the NFA 18 who were good enough to be in the young lions the next year and that was, I think, the factor that made the Young Lions team really strong. Like, I knew that Young Lions before, like, during Haris, yeah. Haris' time, they were actually competing really well in the in the league scene. Right. They weren't just the whipping boys. Okay. They were actually competing, they were in the mid-table, they were, you know, sometimes, I think the, the best finish was top three or something. Yeah. Yeah, so, at that point of time, Young Lions were actually uh, really... Decent side. Decent side in the league. Yeah. And uh, I will pass it over to Ilya to talk about <laughs> the, the uh, subsequent years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think when I think when I wa- when I came on to the Young Lions, uh, there was a <laughs> there was a change in emphasis. It was uh, younger boys, you know. Th- yeah. I think the FA wanted to 
uh, expose the younger talents to to professional football sooner. Um, at that point of time, the Young Lions was the only place I could have went because I was in NS. Right. Yeah. So I I, I went there. Um, yeah. It was the age group felt like it was much younger than when Adam was in Young Lions. Yeah. And with you know, if Adam at that point of time the team was lacking experience. This team is looking even more experienced, uh, and size-wise as well. You know, to 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 be physically ready for for the league is also to, is also the team was also lacking behind. And you know, as we as we progressed through the league, we we played a lot of games where you know some games we did get whipped, some games we did our best, but still <laughs> still lost. Um, maybe one zero, two one, and felt like that was brought down to experience, but. Overall, if if you keep losing games, especially when you are at that age when you are young, um, it, it has a lot to to do with your with your mindset. You know, you feel uh, demoralized most of the time. I think there's two schools of thought here. I think the 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 reason why it was this project was to get the the is a de- developmental side, so so to speak. Yeah. You know, playing in the professional league. Two schools of thought. One is really in favor of that, so you keep that player, uh, those those group of players, and then, you know, uh, so called graduate from there. And then the other school of thought is, you just uh, what you just said was, and and that's my opinion. Yeah. When you start losing games over and over and over and over again, then it becomes okay to lose games. And then because you say okay, it's a developmental side, you are bound to lose games, and then it's okay to lose. So. It's, it, then it gets you know it becomes a cycle and it's always not good to do that and playing in a professional league you need professional players you need, you need to get in there to win games not to develop players so my take has always been all these players has got to go back to clubs and then play for the clubs right and, and that's only my opinion and uh, how about you Jeff you know I think you had a, a stint with the Warriors speak to us about that yeah, so I was with the Warriors primarily this was just for half season before I went into NS yeah so I was with Ilyas at the time as well. He oh, was okay. also, but he, I think he was training with the the senior side as right. well. I was just playing in the prime league yeah. while while waiting for NS. Okay, it's good experience. I learned a few things here and there, and right. just just got myself ready. How yeah. how did your football just fizzle out like that? Because mm. you talk about the captain from YOG, and then you know how how did that just? Yeah. So for after YOG, we had the of course the Lions League Cup. I was injured for the Lions League yes. Cup, so I didn't play at all. Yeah. And yeah, 16, 17, when I was with the under 17s, I got selected for the next Lions yeah. Cup right. alongside Amirul. Yeah. And that was playing with the, the boys from the Young Lions, the, yeah. the older boys, so yeah. Shafiq Ghani, Sahil, okay. uh, Anu, yeah. Kasimi, all those players. Yeah. It was a good experience for myself and Amirul because we were the youngest boys in the okay. team. Uh, although I didn't play a minute, uh, I was just yeah. warming up most of the time at the side. It was a good experience. Yeah. Uh, from there, I didn't get into Young Lions from under-17, under-18s. Right. Then under-19s, I joined the uh, uh, Singapore Cups, yeah. which were m- basically made up of the group of players that didn't get into right. Young Lions. Right. Then I was there for a season. After that, another team, uh, Warriors. Yeah. Then during NS, uh, I wanted to try and during NS try to play for any SPL site. Yeah. And at the time it was Young Lions, so I tried to yeah. train. So I was training with Young Lions with Ilias for maybe about six months where I got injured okay. and all that. So okay. I didn't really make the grade. Then from there I decided that I wanted to do some coaching and okay. just my love for coaching grew from there. So when did you just it, when was the point that you said, Okay, this is not gonna be it. Yeah. I'd rather go and do something else. Right. Yeah. So when was the point that you really felt that you know no? I think probably under eight, maybe under eighteen, under nineteen. Right. I think I felt that I wasn't progressing personally as a okay. as a player okay. as I would have liked. I think I was still playing close to the level of maybe a few years back. Right. The YOG level. So I felt I always had a feeling like if I wasn't gonna be the best, right. I wanted to go and do do something that was okay. was like gonna be good at. So. I think maybe around eighteen, nineteen, I felt that I wanted to try and maybe fall back on some on my studies and yeah. and do and follow another path. Right. Yeah. Uh, Adam, before we talk about the present and the future, right? Just going a little bit back, just two three years back, right? Elbrex season, you know. Now that season, I did quite a lot of commentary on the that, that was 
S League, right? It was called still still the S League, right? I yeah. think SPL. I think it's the first year of SPL, right? First year. 2018, yeah. Yeah, and uh, you played for Elbrex for that, that season. You only played for one season with them? Or two, yes, two, one. One season, yeah. And I commentated on a lot of Elbrex's games during that season. And I can tell you for sure, at, at the beginning, I thought, okay, why is Adam playing for Elbrex? Like, you know, how did the thing, uh, the the deal got set up but along the way as the season went through and when I started commentating in a lot of their games right I thought wow you know I can I can see I can sense the difference that playing for a top side what that can do for a player and that happened to you right and tell me your experience there and how is it different from the previous year uh, maybe at Mets or even at uh, Home United then Right, and, and then you went to Elbrex. Mm. Tell me, what was the difference? First of all, I'd like to say like I'm ever so grateful for the opportunity to be playing for yeah. Elbrex Singapore. I think it was a uh, it was an invaluable invaluable experience. Like I think I was myself and Shahul were the first uh, local players to first be yeah, yeah first local players to be in the team. So it was something different. Like because um, the year before, at 2017, I was with Home United. Uh, he was with Coach Ideal and yeah. he actually helped to bring out my confidence again. 2016, I had a bad season. He just knew I had, uh, with Young Lions, I had my worst season in my whole career so far. So 2017, it was like being revived again in the scene yeah. of football. And then I actually had a pretty, pretty good team yeah. behind me with Haris being on loan from JDT, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hassan. So I had a pretty good season and I think... I did enough to impress the Albirex coaches, the yeah. management, and then with the new ruling of them being able to take right. local players, right. they decided to uh, take me in. And then it was a tough decision, I'd say, because you, it's hard to just say yes to a foreign club. It's yeah. like playing in a foreign club. Yeah. So, um, the foreign my, land as well. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely like in Japan. <laughs> so uh, my family and I and my manager, we, we decided that it's a stepping stone that I should take. And I'm more than grateful that we decided you to made, go. You made the right decision, yeah, my I friend. I made the best decision because it was really the season where I grew to be, I feel I grew to be a, a true professional player. Um, I knew what my role was exactly as an attacking player and stuff and why what, what do you mean by I think the head coach uh, Kazuki Yoshinaga is a brilliant coach he actually um, taught me things that I wouldn't have learned if not for him like for me I was I was always an attacking player I was always playing down the middle but he converted me to playing yeah. on the left yeah uh, I think coach ideal was the, pl- the coach that actually made me play on the left but Coach uh, Yoshinaga was someone that actually made me a very important player on the left. Like, um, I had to make a lot of difference in the game. If not, he wouldn't be happy. Like, whenever I had 1v1 situation, sometimes as an attacking player, you like you're winning. So you get the ball, you know, you just play back, just keep the ball. But I will get scolding from him. Like, he was saying that all the 1v1s I have to take on because I'm an attacking player and we have to take risks. And so, it goes on for the whole season and at the start for the first two three games i felt like why are we always attacking we are already winning but then i understood that he's always saying that it doesn't matter whether we are up five nil six nil all of us still have to go for goal so if you can get 10 goals to your name in the game that's better so it's all for our individual development he was just saying that because i think that side was uh a developmental side because it was under 23 we only had right. one over each play right. which was the goalkeeper and um you know everyone was just going 100 percent every game you know we the games that we were winning like three nil but then we we're still going you know 90th minute we we're still you know sprinting trying to get goals and stuff and it it grew into me like i understood how and why it was that way because um it's all about developmental like how do i say um, towards the 80th minute 80th to 90th minute when you're leading 3 nil, most teams would just chill yeah. just play the ball around kill the time but for us it was time to 
rack up our goals, rack up our assists. Can I can I also say this or ask you this? Was this uh, or any Elrex team, the, the players, right? Were, were they also in survival mode? Definitely. I think all of them came here. <laughs> they took the risk to come here. They um, left their families coming here. And I dare, dare say that they didn't make a huge fortune playing here. But they still took the risk because they wanted to become professionals. And most of them were um, becoming professionals for their first, first year. So of this, and you see them at the training pitch. We have morning sessions, afternoon off. They will be at the pitch. You know, it's it's a total different experience. And the training starts at nine, so you report at like eight fifteen, eight thirty. But they will be there like at seven thirty. <laughs> you know, it is so so different. Like training ends at eleven, but they'll be there till twelve thirty. Like it is so odd for me to see me and Shaul at the start. We were always talking to each other. Like, why are they still here? Like it's an off day. Like we'll come back. You know to to go to the office to do to do some stuff and then you will see the players training without the coach i think i think apart from the fact that uh, they eat uh, breathe and live football i i think it's it's like what we've always been the moral of the story right to to get there you got to be hungry and these guys were hungry because like you said they they're not earning much here in singapore you know the listeners who, who think that the Elbrex players are, they they take this as a stepping stone to maybe play for another singapore side Right, yes. and and that's what has happened, and uh, I think Nakamura now who's playing at Tampines, uh, mm, what a player, right? He is an absolutely brilliant player, mm. and I I think, uh, again going back to that, it's all about the hunger. You know the way they're so structured. The Elbrex training, I've been to Elbrex training sessions, and you see them, everything works like clockwork. Like at breaks, the 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 assistants will bring in the drinks, and then everybody has their drinks on the pitch, mm. and then the thing gets rolled out, right? It's just how a professional setup should be like. You know, with the <laughs> with the minimal support that they are having here, I think they they don't have uh, a huge budget, you know, to yeah. actually have a lot of um stuff, yeah. backroom stuff. But they they make do with what they have. Like yeah. for example, like you were saying, our water breaks are water being bring being brought out to us, and that saves one minute. Correct. And then you can have more <laughs> training more intensity in your yeah. training sessions and that really makes a difference like to me the most prominent one was um, me doing 2v2 trainings and I felt why is it so tiring and why is it so different from doing 2v2 with my Local, prior clubs yeah. so it was because the intensity like before the ball was you know you could see that the ball was going out of play so the head coach would throw in another ball before the ball was going out so you know <laughs> it was always running and yeah. there was always pressure like sometimes, you know, you defend, like, you know, you just channel the player, but it's not, it's always hard pressure and that's why the two, three minutes felt like ages. Yeah. And because, because you know, I, I think and, and you all must know that to play at that highest level, you got to train at that level and then only you can, you know, and, and again, that is for a different podcast and it will take another two, three hours of that, right? And, and obviously, congratulations, Adam, because you guys were league champions, cup champions, team of the year, and young player of the year, right, at that year. And it, it, is, it is safe to say that that was your best year so far. And let's hope that you have uh, more of good years to, uh, with, with the Lion City Sailors and, of course, with uh, other clubs if uh, yeah, in the future, right? Now, let's talk about the present and future. What are you guys doing currently? Obviously, we know you are with the Lion City Sailors. Uh, tell us in, in detail, right, uh, uh, Jeff, what what are you doing currently? Um, currently, I'm a coach at GSSL. Right. So I where you uh, started out, right? Yeah, where I, when I used to play at yeah. the GSSL leagues when I was younger, right. and now I'm coaching at GSSL. Okay. At the same time, I'm doing events and marketing for for GSSL as well. Right. So I'm kind of having a dual role. Right. And and you club. also have a degree f- uh, in mass yeah, uh, mass com- yeah, degree in mass communication communications from RMIT. Right. Right. So yeah, but now I'm more or less full-time coaching and doing this media related job nice and you're focusing yep. on that fully right yes nice correct. and uh you just started that or uh, i've been coaching for close to three years nice so moved on from uh under fives under six up so, so now i'm coaching so eight, t- 12 14. So, so tell me has yeah. uh, your your previous years in, in playing football and, and being coached by the likes of Kadir and what yeah. have you has that influenced you a little bit in your coaching i mean right now? 
throughout my my short career as a youth yeah. footballer, I've had good coaches and right. not so good coaches, and I've taken <laughs> taken taken the good things and taken the bad things as well right. from from nice. each coach, like Coach Kadir, a lot of good things, yeah. few other coaches, what what to do, what not to do, and I think yeah. I've tried to develop my own way of like coaching and and stuff like that. So I think it's helped me, like right. my experiences as a young boy, nice. what I liked, what I didn't like. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. didn't like a lot of running without the football. Right. That kind that that sort of thing. Okay. I tried to put that in my sessions as well. So more fitness with the ball. Adam like, would that love kind that. of thing, yeah. Adam would love that uh, <laughs> running with the ball and not without the ball, right? I would just like to say that in Albrecht we've never we yeah. run without the ball the whole season. Beautiful. Right. Uh, yeah, so all this this kind of this <laughs> kind of yeah, yeah. these kinds of things. Yeah. These kinds of things, uh, yeah, put it in my session and nice. try to make it enjoyable for the kids because at the end of the day, the kids want to have fun while learning something as well. Tell us about the good news. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm getting married at the Lovely. end of end of November. So nice, nice. yeah, to the love of my life. So Lovely. What's your What's the name of your love of your life? Uh, Nabila. Nice. Shout out to her. Um, <laughs> hoping that she's listening to this now. She will. She will. She will. She will be listening. I'm sure you will post this out as well, right? Yeah, so, definitely. Uh, that's great. Congratulations on that. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. And uh, it'll be well, a different different wedding this year because of the COVID. Right. Yeah. Different kind yeah, of wedding, but still money, looking forward money. to it. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. posting a disclaimer. You don't want to uh, invite all of us. <laughs> that's yeah. why. No, no. You can you can <laughs> tune into the Zoom the Zoom session maybe. <laughs> oh, there's a Zoom wedding. Hopefully, hopefully. Wow. Yeah. Trying nice. to get everybody involved. <laughs> How about you, Elias? What are you doing uh, currently? I'm um, currently in year three in the NUS nice. doing electrical engineering. Okay. Uh, it's tough, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's, it's really <laughs> tough. Uh, last last year, I was I started uni. I was uh, still playing professionally. For Ballester, right? Yeah. yeah, I saw you. So, yeah. uh, it's tough, but I I I do make it work. I never miss a session unless it's exams. Okay. Uh, but it's it's tough having to balance both of this. Um, currently, I'm not with uh, SPL club. I'm with uh, Tiong Bahru in the NFL. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hoping the SPL kicks off soon so the NFL can kick off too. Okay. Uh, yeah, just staying fit and hopefully if there's an opportunity to to come back and play professionally, I think I'm 25 now. Still, still quite a. Okay. Decent age to, to make a comeback. Well, clubs out there, if you're listening in, uh, Elias Lee is available. He's on the shopping window. Yep. Yeah. Hit and, me up. And, and one more thing you forgot. Oh, yeah. Um, is, okay, is this an online kind of business or is. Uh, yeah, it's an it's a online bakery. It's on uh, Instagram. So, me and my uh, girlfriend, yeah. we've been doing this for about two years now. Yeah. And. We we do wedding cakes, we do big sales. So yeah, Jeff noted noted. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he he's bought a few times. Yeah, yeah. right, right. So so your wedding cake, Jeffrey, he's gonna bake it for you. How about you, Elias? Are you gonna bake your own wedding cake? Uh, I I, I don't think no pressure. No I, pressure. I, I, I don't think me and my my girlfriend now want that stress to to bake our own <laughs> <laughs> wedding cake. But yeah, we'll see in a few years time. Yeah, <laughs> right. Um. Adam, your hopes for this season when it gets uh, re- or in, when it resumes, right? Uh, for your hopes for this season, let let's take one baby st- step at a time. This season, your hope? Um, honestly, my individual target this year is to get back to where I left off. Right. Um, to be a main player in my club. Okay. It will be really irreplaceable in my club and irreplaceable. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so that is my first target, and then to get back my national team spot. Okay. Because that's the highest level that you can never be in your own country. So that proves that you are the cream of the crop in your country. So that is definitely a target for me to be in the national team. Right. Uh, just before we go, one last uh, quick question. Right. Any advice for young footballers starting out like you guys did 10 years ago or even before that? Any advice? Just, just one little bit of something that you think that can help you know, youth of today because you guys grew up playing the game and playing in the national team or the NFAs and what have you, right? Any any advice so that they don't slip up, like because there's so many banana skins around along the way, right? Any anything. Uh, we start off with Adam. Um, I think everyone has to realize that talent only gets you to a certain place, right. and definitely it's the hard work. Of course, everyone says that hard work is the key thing, but it really is. Like you know, I see some players who's not really 
who's not really given the talent at such a young age but you know they've been working hard and now they are the players that are making it professionally and some other players who are you know crazy talented who's not even there anymore so it's really about how much you want it and like Ilya said he's 25 but he's he wants to play football again and you never know maybe next year he has a big contract and I'll be the one Hopefully. talking to him to <laughs> help me to hook up with him well yeah. well said Adam because you know what it's all about the hustle, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And we, you just uh, did an advertisement for my podcast. Thank you very much. Uh, Jeffrey, anything? I think if you really want to make it in whatever you do in life, you just have to have that, have that hunger. We've been mentioning it. Yeah. You have to have yeah. that hunger. You have to have that desire to, to want to achieve anything. And even as young players, you have to try and just block out all the dis- distractions from wherever that may be from... Yeah. Whatever, and just focus, be single-minded in what you want to achieve, and hopefully through hard work, maybe a bit of luck, you get to to right. go to where you want to be. Yeah. Nice, Elias. I would say to to any young person who is going to do what they really want to do or play football, you know, the important thing is to also focus on the minor details which you might not think of, like going to bed extra early, <laughs> um, eating well. Uh, pushing a bit harder in training, you know, all, all, all these little things, they, they add up uh, and you will eventually see, like, uh, they, they will help you in future, you know. Yeah, you're, you're definitely right, you know, I think the, the many small details, when you accumulate them, yeah. it, it, will, it will prove yeah. to be the difference between yeah. winning or losing or making it or breaking it. Well, gentlemen, Thank you for being on the Silver Fox Hustle podcast. It has been an honor to have you guys. You know, after so long, right? <laughs> uh, the, the first time I met you guys were thirteen years uh, was thirteen years ago, and I'm so happy to have you guys in this podcast. Thank you very much, and uh, wishing you guys the best of luck in whatever in the future, uh, in the present as well. And I uh, hope to see you soon back in the national team. Jeffrey doing a great job at JSSL. Carry on coaching. Uh, <laughs> Keep on uh, hustling, and Elias as well. Uh, don't forget that cake for me. Uh, probably uh, in the next few weeks. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.